Hey everyone, so this is the continuation of the video from last week. As you know, a bleeder screw on this caliper snapped off. While we still have the caliper in place, we're going to attempt to try and remove it. If that does not succeed, then we'll pull the caliper off and then we'll have to drill it and then tap this center off. So this is the easiest process first. We'll just try this. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then we'll go to plan B. To give it its best chance over the past couple of days, just been spraying this down some lubricant. Um, you can use WD-40 CRC, whatever you have. Just keep spraying it down, took it for a couple of drives so it's heat cycled and now we'll just be heating it as well. As you can see I've just clamped off the brake line as well. So just with the cold chisel we're going to try and notch it. and then You can use a cold chisel and actually notch the strip bolt and if you tap it well enough the impact might actually break it free and you might actually be able to hit it off. This bolt was extremely tight, so that method did not work. So we moved on to heating up the caliper, and this is at this point is when we tried the extractor. According to the instructions of the extractor, what you have to do is you have to have a center hole, which was already in place because this is a bleeder bolt. Then you take the extractor bit and then you tap it in using a hammer, and then you slowly try and unwind it. As you can see from this picture, the extractor bit snapped in there. So we decided to try the second method, which is weld a nut on the top there. Sometimes what, when you weld a nut or a bolt on the top, you can actually extract the bolt because then you have a good solid fused section of metal to the damaged part. So sometimes this works. In this case, it didn't really work that well. There was good penetration on the bolt, but it just snapped off. The weld was actually still on, in place, but the bolt itself broke, so we moved on to a nut. And the nut didn't work as well. So then we moved on to drilling out the broken extractor tip in there, but this was of no avail. As you would have seen in the previous video last week, link will be down in the description. Due to it being hard and steel, none of the bits would really penetrate or really bite into that broken bit. They couldn't get started, even the cobalt bit, drill bits couldn't get in. So we had to remove the caliper and as you'll see later on, we even mounted it in a drill press to take the variable out of using a hand drill. Watch my other video if you want to see this in detail. When taking out the caliper, you can leave the brake pads in there and when you have it on the bench, you just tap out the glide pins, remove the shim and then you can pull out the pads and just make sure you block up the line at the back where the brake fluid is fed in through the caliper. So it's at this point we started drilling on the drill press and proper cutting fluid but like I said earlier it, it just did not bite. It wouldn't, it couldn't get started because of the hardened steel part of the extractor bit. So what we did was we moved on to the carbide cutting bit and this basically ate away on that hardened steel extractor bit. It removed everything and it, and it cut in there with ease. So if you're ever stuck in this scenario and if this ever does happen to you, if you do have an extractor bit in there, and if it breaks, you can use a carbide bit and for whatever application that you might be stuck in the scenario with. Once you get that hardened steel bit out of there, and then you can move on to your, your good quality drill bits, and then everything will be straightforward from there. But as I said previously as well, try and avoid these extractor sets and only use them in certain scenarios described in the previous video. So we're just heating up the caliper because it's quite the ambient temperature is quite cold it's about 10 degrees ambient so to give it its best chance to come out now we're just heating it up and we've got a set of left hand drill bits that we're going to be using they co they also cobalt but that should pull out the, the remaining debris we've got the oxy torch here 
and we could use that on the caliper but that's a bit too extreme so the heat gun would normally suffice for this because most of the work's already done but had we not used the extractor set in the first place we would have opted for that but as i said earlier we wanted to show you if the extractor set worked or not so we've done this method also if you are using a torch like that on aluminium you have to be very careful because you can damage it quite fast so just keep that in mind So all that trouble for just that one bleed screw right there. So as you can see here, the bottom of the bleed screw is still in there. Regardless, I will be removing the pistons because you can't have any swath or metal debris in there. So I'll be removing each one of those pistons and blowing compressed air and basically giving all of this good clean, using brake clean and everything, removing the seals and changing all of that over. So notice all of that there, make sure you get all of that. If you're doing this on your vehicle, I would still advise to try as much as you can to get rid of all of that swath. And it is advisable to pull out the pistons. If it doesn't come out in one piece like this one, it didn't come out in one piece. So in that scenario, you would be better off just pulling off the piston just to make sure that there's no metal debris in there. When extracting the pistons from the caliper, use compressed air and use pieces of wood or something strong, but that won't damage the pistons in between each of the four pistons. Then so you just gradually push each one out until they all come out a significant amount. And then you can go ahead and either pull them out or you can use compressed air and just pop, pop them out at the same time. A couple will probably come out simultaneously and the others will either have to be pulled out or you'll have to put the reinstall the old ones, the ones that just came out and use compressed air again to push it out if you have difficulty. This is why it's important, as I mentioned earlier, you have to pop the pistons out when you drill this. If you look at the debris in here, if I flip the caliper around this way, you'll see it a bit easier. Notice all of that debris. So if I go in there with the pick, there's all this metal debris in there. So this is why it's important to remove this and flush all of this out, give this a very good clean. And you can go ahead and put everything back together. So now we've installed new dust boots and a new piston seal on the inside. And we're just going to be putting the piston back in there after cleaning the whole bore. So if you look inside, the bore is absolutely clean and it still looks like new and it still has the original coating. That's always a good sign to see. And that's why, like I said earlier, it's important to pull out your pistons and lube everything up. Make sure you use adequate lube on everything. Loop your piston, loop your new seals and everything before putting it back in. The bottom surface of the bleed screw where it sits in the caliper was slightly damaged. So just to play it safe, if you do encounter a similar scenario, I wouldn't recommend repla just replacing the bleeder valve. What we've got here is a bleed screw repair kit. It basically comes with with its own seat and a new bleed screw. So this just ensures that it's a perfect seal because if the caliper does not seal properly, 
and you could have some breaking issues later on which can be very dangerous so this is a safer method I'll put a link in the description of something similar but you should be able to find this in um, specialist brake shops or people who specialize in brake repairs as I said previously we were fortunate enough to be able to remove the damaged bleed nipple using the left hand drill bit so this was a fairly straightforward job there were no threads that needed to be cut in there and we didn't need to put in a new insert or anything similar it just bolted in there and it's got a tapered edge so as you tighten it it gets tighter onto the caliper So we just installed the bleeder screw threaded insert. This was just because the bottom of the thread, um, which you'll see now. So from the bottom of the threads were all fine, but the actual, the base where it sits at an angle and where the bleed nipple. So for example, if I use this and I'll show you this, this V over here, that particular angle was a bit damaged on the base of the caliper. So as a result, just to play safe, we've installed this insert over here it's just called a brake screw repair insert so you would have seen this in the previous video where that was extracted so this is the old bleed screw came out of one piece so that's why all the threads were intact but however if you look at the bottom over here that part here got a bit damaged when it was being extracted with the drill bit so just to play safe, like I said, I've gone ahead and installed this repair set over here. So this just provides you with a complete new bleed screw and a surface where it seals onto. So that ensures that there's no leak or anything similar. So as I said, um, if you ever encounter this problem, always try and use a left hand drill bit. And as I've mentioned previously, avoid these extractor sets. They cause more headache than anything. You can use them in the circumstances that I described earlier, but preferably always always stick to a left hand drill bit if you can. These are by far the best solution and the safest option. So this is what it looks like now with the bleed screw repair kit on the vehicle and we've tidied up the whole caliper. So that's what it looks like now. Thanks for watching everyone. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.